Welcome to the Herbie Speaks Board Maker demo. Uh, Herbie Speaks was developed by Guy Barker and is made available free to anyone who wants to download it at herbie.org. That's H E R B I.org. It's available for Windows only, or you can use it on a Windows partition if you have one. And this is the Herbie Basic version we're going to demonstrate. We are working on a Herbie Advanced version that will have more features uh, in the future, but right now the Basic version is functional and works very well. So to start with, we're going to show you how to add buttons. So it starts out with just a blank canvas, basically, your first board. And we're going to add buttons by right-clicking. So your camera mouse and eagle eyes use left-click in order to select. So we made it very, very simple to where you just right-click in order to edit and add buttons to the board. So the first one there is to add a new button. And I can add as many buttons as I want to my board. Now to begin with, you probably only want to add maybe two buttons, depending on the level of the user. We could start out with just two buttons so that there's not a bunch of selections and, and just start basic. So always keep it basic. The next thing is when we place our buttons, we want to make sure that the button's uh, placement is to the sides. We don't want to put one in the center because that's where the user is going to naturally rest and we don't want them to accidentally select it. If you do put a button in the middle, that's where you could maybe put the instructions to the activity or the game that you have uh, going there. And then don't put the buttons in the extreme location. So don't put them clear over in the corners or clear on the edges. Those are really hard to get to, especially with eagle eyes. Put them where they're accessible and the user can get to them and, and actually select them easily. So don't make it too hard, don't make it too easy, and, and do it that way. Now to begin with, what we want to do is come up, uh, if you just downloaded Herbie and we want to come up to this top menu. We have a file menu that's just a basic save menu that we've seen before a view menu which is full screen, and then options. These options are the default options that you want to set up. The background color is defaulted to black uh, naturally. Black is very easy on the eyes and is a very good color selection. Sometimes the bright colors can be distracting or can actually kind of hurt your eyes. Um, in some vision impairments, the bright colors may be good. So it's kind of your choice what you want to use. I default to black. The default button text color is white to begin with. Uh, I use the white because it appears very well on the black for when I'm editing. So I just leave that at white. Um, and then the default button text font is, you're going to want to change that. And that's where you can change the style of the font and the size. And I use a 48 as my default size. I think it's a good size to use. So you can set up your default as 48. And then Herbie will remember that when you start it next time and always use that as the default. The last option is the border thickness. Now when I scroll over a button, you notice that the border appears. And that border just lets the user know that they're on the button and they can hold it there to then make the selection. So I want to do my border thickness and I use the highest of an 8 border thickness on that so that I, I get a good vision of exactly what I'm doing. So next thing that I want to do then is I'm going to right click on my button to actually edit it. And now you can see we're going to go through all these options on my menu. So the next thing I can do is I can remove a button if I don't want it there. I can add it back. So add and remove buttons. The next one is enter edit mode. Now I can click anywhere on the screen to enter edit mode because enter edit mode is the full screen. And this is where I can then move my buttons around. I can resize my buttons by clicking and dragging on the corner of the button and move them to wherever I need them to be. Once I'm done, I want to make sure that I right click and exit edit mode. If you don't exit edit mode, uh, we're going to show you how to do multiple boards, and you, if you accidentally leave one in edit mode, then it won't allow you to select until you exit edit mode. So just get in the habit of always exiting edit mode when you're done. Now, the boards are set up to do dynamic resizing. So when you, if you resize your screen size or, or that, you can see how the buttons dynamically move to the actual size of the screen. So that's a really nice feature, especially if you convert over to a projector and, and it resizes for you. So the next thing we're going to right click, that's edit mode. So edit mode is used just to resize and move buttons. So the next one is to set the button text. So I'm going to set the text and you can set it to anything that you want. So we're going to say hello. Hello. And what you can see is that I can type in uh, full paragraphs if I want to. I can use punctuation. Uh, it uses the voice from Windows when it speaks. So you can actually go into the Windows settings and change the voice if you want a male or a female voice. Um, but it also does recognize punctuation. So if I put in a comma, it will have a slight pause or do things like that. Now, we want to show you how to do a couple little cheats real quick. 
So I'm going to click on this one right here, and I'm going to set the button text to say cow. Cow. Now if you hear that again, cow. Cow. It's very quick. It's very quick. I'm not sure if that's even saying cow because it's so quick. So what I can do, kind of a cheat, is I can set the button text. Um, because I'm using an automated voice, I kind of have to learn how it works. And so I'm going to add a, two extra W's to this. Cow. And now it pronounces it a little bit better. So in this situation, I can now set a picture on it. I could hide the text, and it's not important. Now, if I wanted the text to still show, I've got two options. I could come into this specific button, and I could no. change the font size of the, the font, or I could just take and go into edit mode and adjust the size of my box so that only cow shows. So now it says cow. cow. It pronounces it a little bit better, and, and everything works. So those are a couple little tricks that you can use to get it to say exactly what you want. Now. We're going to add pictures now, so we're going to right click back up on our hello button and our next function set text, set picture. So I'm going to set a picture and you can set any picture from your uh, library of pictures on your computer. So we're going to use a sunshine that says hello. Hello. And there's my hello sunshine. And we can do two different ways of adding a picture. So that's just from our computer. Over here, let's right click, set button text, and let's do a kangaroo. So kangaroo, but now I need a picture. But when I come to add a picture, set picture on button, I don't have a kangaroo. So what I can do is come over to a search engine like Google, type in kangaroo, and then right here up at the top, click on images. And then it's going to give me a bunch of images of kangaroos, and I can pick the one that I like. Now when I do this, I want to make sure that I, I save the small picture. If you click on these pictures, it then gives you a larger picture. Don't save the larger picture because otherwise what that's going to do is increase the size of your Herbie file and eventually we want to be able to share these files with each other and so we want to keep them nice and small. So always save your pictures from here and try to choose pictures that have uh, good contrast, meaning don't choose a picture where maybe the, the animal blends in with the background. Try to choose something that maybe is a little bit more evident of what you're doing. And also when you're choosing your pictures, uh, let's say if you're searching for a dog, don't choose the cute dog that looks like a lion. Choose the dog that actually looks like a dog. So we're going to choose this one and we're going to right click, save image as, and then I'm just going to save that into, I've created a Herbie picture folder inside of my picture file, my picture file on my computer. So I'll just save that, kangaroo, and I save that picture, come back into Herbie Speaks, and there's my kangaroo and I can add that on. And then what I can do is I can enter edit mode and this is where I can resize my box to maybe fit that picture better so it's not skewed. And then exit edit mode and there's my kangaroo. Now I am using these pictures under fair use, educational, nonprofit use, so I'm not selling or redistributing the pictures so I'm okay to use them the way I've got them. And then we're going to move on to our next item now. So I come back to my sunshine here. I'm going to right click. I've now set the picture. I could also remove the picture once I've set it. So if I wanted to remove the picture and then use a different one, I could do that. And the next one is to show the text. So right now it's showing the text. It defaults to that. But I could uncheck that and now it hides the text. Hello. It still speaks whatever text is there. It just doesn't show the text. So I can show the text or hide the text. And then my next one is to set the button text font. So here's where I could change the font size or style of the font for each specific button if I needed to. So like we talked about down here on the cow, instead of shrinking my box, I could have just maybe used a higher point font to make the cow bigger so only cow showed. So you can edit all of that. Right click again, my next option is to set the button text color. The button text color can be very important for two reasons. One is for the border. Notice my border is white on a white picture so you can't see the border when I scroll over the picture. So I'm going to right click, set button text color, and I pick yellow. And there's my yellow border and it looks great. Now I can see it when I'm over it. But let's show my text again and now that text kind of blends into that sunshine. So let's come back in, right click, and I'm going to set the button text color 
and that's going to change the color of the border and the text. And we're going to choose, we'll do an orange. And now that hello looks much better. I can see it, and I got an orange border on there, and it looks great. So I can change the color on each button to be different if I want it to do that also. So the last option on here is I can set the button text uh, font and color, and then at the bottom I can go to full screen view if I wanted to. And then the, the last one is link to board. So we're going to show you how to now create boards and link them together. So up here on the main menu I have boards. Now you're going to create multiple boards within the same file. So I'm still in the same file. If you create multiple files you cannot link those together. You have to create the boards in the same file. So right here is a list of my boards. I've only got one right now. It's default. So I can add a new board. I can make a new board from the current board. So for example, if I wanted to do a matching game and I wanted to basically create a template and just copy and paste or copy the, that template and just scramble the answers around, I could do that. So I don't have to recreate it every time. I can rename the current board or I can delete the current board. So I'm going to add a board. It just says board two. So I can say, okay, I'm fine with that. Board two and it gives me a new blank board. So up here under boards, you can see now I have default and board two, and I can add as many boards as I want. Now on board two, for illustrative purposes, I'm going to add a new button, and I'm going to set the text on this button to say main. And then I'm going to right click and come down to link to another board, and I'm going to link back to the default. Now I can have this button, if I go back to link to another board, I can have it speak the button text when moving to the other board or I can tell it not to speak it. So if you don't want it to speak you can uncheck that box. But I want it to speak main, and it brings me back to the main board. So now I could set up one of these buttons to link to that other board. So let's just click on our hello, right click, link to another board and I want it to link to board 2. Hello. And it comes back. Now when you're using this function you need to make sure that you uh, use recovery time and the reason we need to use recovery time is because if you double click so if I click Main. and while it's speaking I click it again it stops it from advancing to the next board so you need to use enough recovery time that it can click Main. 1 1000 and advance to the next board before it allows it to click again so that's a very good example of using recovery time on camera mouse or uh, eagle eyes so now I want to show you a couple of sample files that we've done so I'm going to come up and say file open and it's going to say, would you like to save your current changes? So if we did, we could say yes. And we'll just name this our test file. Save. And now which, which file do you want to open? So I'm going to start out very basic and just show you uh, the red ball. So this is just a basic object identification board. So here's my first board. This is a ball. Can, Can you find the ball? And then it sequences to the next board. Now notice right here in the middle I put the instructions. Can, Can you, you find the ball? So just very basic, if I click on the wrong answer. This is a truck. Try again. Then it tells me to try again. Come over here. You found the ball. Good job. And now it moves. So now it's I'm trying to positively identify, can they find the ball every time? You found the ball. Good job. How intentional is their selection? You found the ball. Good job. And so you can see it keeps sequencing. Now what this is, is it's just different boards. So now I'm on board four. And basically you can see I've got ten boards in here right now. So let's jump to board ten. And let's say I wanted to make one more board. So I could come up to boards now and say make a new board from the current board. That way I don't have to recreate everything. So make a new board from the current board. What do you want to name it? Board 11. That's okay. And here's board 11. It looks just like board 10. And I can double check to make sure I'm on board 11. There's the check mark. And now I can edit, enter edit mode, and I can move my objects around. So I can scramble them, put that up there, put that down, down there now, exit edit mode. And then I want to come back to board 10 and tell board 10, click on my ball, link to another board, and it's going to link to board 11. Now you can link to any board. It doesn't have to be sequential. But I'm going to tell it to link to board 11. So now when I click on it, you found the ball. Good, good job. job it links to board 11. So you can see how this would be very basic object identification. Now I could come in and change the object and to a new object and just change the text and very easily I could create multiple things. So start out basic. You, every user is at a different level. Um, so find out where they're at but always default to being simple. And then in this situation 
you know, once they get good at being able to ob identify an object out of two, then maybe add three, then go to four, and work their way up to, to uh, where they can make multiple selections. So the next option, let's show you one more file, open. Would you like to save the current changes? Yes, we'll save that. And then I'm going to show you a butterfly matching game. Here's my main main page. Can you find the picture that matches this one? So there's my instructions. If I click on the wrong one, not a match. Try again. Nothing happens. It's not a match, but it tells me to try again. And the text on this I've made generic. So it says, can you find a picture that matches this one? So I could actually reuse this file and just replace the pictures with new pictures. Um, now with some kids, you may need to be very specific and say, can you find the butterfly that matches this one? So you can change the text. You can do whatever you need to to match your needs. If I click on the correct butterfly. Good job. You, you found, found the match. match. It scrambles. And basically it just went to the next board. You can see I've got five boards on this specific game that are set up and the way that it links back and forth. Now this is a good example. You could set this up, say for example, if you've got a high functioning individual where you could set up quizzes and you could have a question with the different answers. And then they, if they get the correct answer, it would then sequence to the next question and, and become progressively harder or just finish out the quiz. So you could digitize a test if you wanted to uh, for an individual using Herbie Speaks. So we're, we're gonna go file and uh, open, show you a couple more here. Uh, communication wise, let's go very uh, simple here, is a yes no board. You could do a very simple yes no board. No. no. Yes. yes. Now be careful with yes no boards. A lot of people get a little really excited with yes no boards. Uh, you need to be very careful in how you use these and the questions that you ask that they are uh, specific to a point that you can actually use them successfully. Um, otherwise, it can become frustrating to you and the user if you're doing that. So there's a very simple yes-no board that you could create. Uh, now here is an example of an I want, I need, I feel, I am. So they could select from this main board, I want. I want. In the middle, it still says I want. I want. To watch, to watch a movie. movie. To watch a movie. So they could tell you what they want. Uh, you come back at self-navigating main menu, main. and we could go into I need. I need food, and you can see they can do it. So this is a very basic example of what you could do. Now I want. I want. Let's say they want a movie. To watch a movie. Well, what we could then do is make to watch a movie link to another board. So let's create another board. I'm going to add a board, and let's call it movies. Okay, blank board. I can now add some movies for them to pick from by adding buttons and pictures of those movies. And then I can go back to my I want board and tell the movie button to now link to the movies. So now when I say I want a movie, to watch a movie, now I get to select my movie. So you can see how you can really make a lot of content for them to be able to use. File open. I'm not going to save the changes. So that was a, a really easy one there. For uh, educational, here was one that one of our users used. She was working on weather and numbers. So she would select numbers. Numbers. And here's the numbers. Notice they're not colored. We don't want her to memorize colors. We want her to memorize numbers. So where's 10? 10. And then she could also self-navigate. Okay, let's go back and work on weather. Menu. Menu. Weather. And then here's our weather. And now we can select our weather and do different things like that. So we wanted to give you a good demonstration of just different things that are out there. I'm going to show you one last one. Here's just a simple animal board. There's no linking. There's nothing special here. This is just very basic. Dog. Cat. And you can see how we can just do something very, very simple and basic like that without any linking also. So you don't have to get fancy. Just make sure that you stick to the level of the user and start out simple. Always err on the side of starting out too basic and work your way up. Now on our website, we're going to be creating a library uh, where we can share files. Right now, it's up and available. You can upload your files. So if you start making some, upload them, and we'll start a library where others can download those or you can download other ones. And then you can use those and maybe edit the text to be a little bit more specific to what you want. But that way we can start a, a good sharing program. So if you have any questions, please let us know. We'd be happy to help you. I hope you enjoyed the video.